good afternoon everyone can you am i audible yeah yeah good afternoon everyone uh, and a uh, good morning and good evening to those members who have logged in from different parts of the world i am samya shrikant from rotary bangalore indranagar rotary district 3190 It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to train the trainers program of MHM RI District 3190 for the Rotary year 2020-21. A warm welcome to our DG Rotarian Fazal Mahmood and Rotarian Meera Prasad, our first lady. Welcome, ma'am, and welcome, sir. I would like to welcome our immediate past district chair of MHM. Rotarian Dr. Meenakshi Bharat, current district chair Rotarian Nisha Bellare, members of MHM District 3190, Rotarian Lavanya Shankar, Rotarian Latha Krishna, Rotarian Suparna Goshal, Rotarian Usha Gauri, and Rotractor Dr. Asta Singh. I extend a warm welcome to all the dignitaries from various Rotary districts of India and across the globe. and a warm welcome to all the rotarians ants and its and friends of rotary who are present here for the session today i welcome each one of you to this train the trainers program on sustainable menstruation and menstrual hygiene which will be presented by dr meenakshi bharat followed by rotarian lavanya shankar later part of the program before i hand over the proceedings to suparna it gives me immense pleasure to introduce our dge fazal mahmood rotarian fazal mahmood was born and raised in bengaluru he is a passionate rotarian a great professional fair minded person and a loving family man a practicing architect since 1986 under the banner matrix consultants Over the last 3 decades the firm has designed a wide spectrum of projects ranging from institution institutions mosques commercial buildings boutique villas and interiors for corporates and residential projects he began his rotary journey in the year 1979 as a charter member of the rotary club of jainagar and became the president of the club in 1984 85 He later joined as a charter member of Rotary Bangalore Metro in the in the month of April 1993 and became the president of the club in 1997-98. He has been a part of the district team since 1996-97. Some of the important assignments and milestones in his journey were being the DRCC thrice assistant governor, conference vice chairman thrice, conference secretary district secretary zone governor and directors coordinator he was the chairman for the district training assembly and icgf for youth service and club service a graduate of the rli he has served the district training team as a facilitator for pets agts dots and district assembly over the years he has attended rotary regional seminars and summits and the rotary international convention in bangkok he is a major donor to the rotary foundation happily married to rotarian sabiha who is the charter president of innovil bangalore metro and the rotarian of rcb metro they are blessed with a son danish mahmood a practicing architect who is married to sania a software engineer and daughter masira mahmood who is an interior designer i thank nisha for giving me this wonderful opportunity to welcome such an august gathering and also introducing our dg over to you suparna thank you so much uh, our dg uh, mr fazal mahmood has literally lived the life of a true rotarian it's more than 3 decades having walked various facets of rotary i think rotary is right within his palms on the lines in his palms and what a good guide can we look forward to uh, sir may i invite you to say a few words 
to us today. Thank you. Thank you, Soumya, ma'am, for introducing me to this August gathering. And the MC Suparna Gosal had so much praise for me. Uh, ma'am, when uh, our president-elect Nisha Bellara invited me to this program, I was surprised. I didn't know what to do at this program. And when I was just trying to search for what to talk and what to speak to these warriors who have been working so hard on the most neglected area of humanity, I was just trying to Google and understand from my family members. So they were surprised that what are you going to do there? So I said, well, I'll have to look, see what I have to do there. Well, I can just be telling them uh, what is what and how we could be of support to MHM this year and the years to come. <clears throat> Dear friends, I would say a very good morning, very good afternoon and very good evening because each one of the participants who are here are from different time zones. Let me thank uh, our gracious first lady, Rotarian Meera Nagendra Prasad for standing in for our district governor, Nagendra Prasad. And I'm sure she would be more participative than what our DG and what I would be here. Yes, friends, uh, President-elect Nisha Bellare, Rotarian Dr. Minakshi Bharat, Rotarian President-elect Lavanya Shankar, and we have a lot of MHM warriors across the globe to get themselves trained to. Go and go back and train. I'm very happy to be a part of most of the Rotary leaders, present, future, and past from the Rotary across the world. Dear Rotary friends and friends of Rotary, it is a pleasure that I am here to share with you a very noble thought. Yes, why MHM is what all of you have been asking and what Rotary has been asking and Rotary wants to answer that through all you warriors. Dear friends, over the period, menstrual hygiene and menstrual practices still face many social, cultural and religious restrictions which are a big barrier in the path of menstrual hygiene management. We even shirk and shy away from this very subject when we discuss with our own soulmates even. In many parts of the country, especially in rural areas, girls are not prepared and aware about menstruation. So they face many difficulties and challenges, not only at home, but at schools, and workplaces when they grow up. While reviewing literature, it was found that little inaccurate or incomplete knowledge about menstruation is a great hindrance in the path of personal and menstrual hygiene management. My dear friends, I think we got to keep them aware, aware that girls and women have very less or no knowledge about their reproductive tract infections caused due to ignorance of personal hygiene and during menstrual times. In rural areas, it's very bad that women do not have access to sanitary products or they know very little about the types and method of using them or are unable to afford such products due to high cost, which our Minakshi Bharat keeps insisting on. It's not only the persons using from the rural areas, but I think within the urban areas also, it has become quite expensive. So they most rely, mostly rely on reusable cloth packs, which they wash and use repeatedly. Needs and requirements of the adolescent girls and women are ignored, despite the fact that there are major developments in the area of water and sanitation. Dear friends, women manage this differently when they are at home or outside. At homes, they dispose those products in domestic waste and in public toilets, and they flush them in the toilets without knowing the consequences of choking. 
Hence, a need to educate and make them aware about the environmental pollution and health hazards associated with them. Implementation of modern techniques like incineration can help to reduce the waste. Also, awareness should be created to emphasize the use of reusable sanitary products or the natural sanitary products made from materials like banana fiber, bamboo fiber, sea sponges, water hyacinth, and so on. And I'm sure you are going to train this trainer how to do this all about. Dear friends, now learning about this hygiene management helps ensure cleanliness, knowing what product or material to be used, how often to change it, and having access to wash facilities, helping girls and women to have a good hygiene while menstruating. Now all of us know how important environment plays in our lives. So Rotary has made this a seventh focus area. With environment being added as a seventh focus area of RI, every district, if they adopt MHM, will be contributing in a big way towards saving single-use sanitary napkins being sent to the landfills, thus preserving our Mother Earth and the environment. In this direction, our MHM team, led by these wonderful warriors, have organized a train the trainer program of MHM District 3190. <coughs> our District 3190 has been actively conducting MHM programs for the past four years. And I think they have reached about 10,000 participants or the beneficiaries, we could put it as both as girls, young and women in 24 cities across the country <coughs> and conducted about 150 awareness sessions. Congratulations. And I'm sure you are going to have many more. <coughs> the team has also trained and set up a HSZ to manufacture reusable cloth pads. I, on behalf of the present district governor, Nagendra Prasad, and myself, and the district governor nominee, Aneja, Jitendra Aneja, will promise you that we are with you on this wonderful journey. <coughs> the MHM, MHM team 3190 is ready to handhold any district who comes forward and help them implement the project. And I'm sure with all your efforts, we could try and pass on this message to other districts within our own country and the countries across and see that we could be helped to this very movement which humanity needs the most. With these few words, I thank every one of you for taking a lead in doing this program so much which is needed. And that's the need of the hour and the need of the day to take care of the environment and take care of the women, young women who are at risk. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you, Nisha. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Fazal, for such a, a good suggestion and a lovely talk. It's nice and heartening to see a man actually go ahead and take a lead in talking about menstrual hygiene very much required today. We need the men folk to understand the importance of menstrual hygiene. So thank you so much once again, sir. Yeah, May I now, uh, thank, thank you so much, sir. Can I request everybody to uh, have their names on the screens and the club name if possible, easier for us to identify and talk to you all. May I request this to happen? Like I have Suparna Ghoshal, so others, if they could have their names. I see some numbers here and there. P73118, uh, kindly put in your names and your club names. It will be much easier for us to address you. Thank you so much. May I request uh, our uh, first lady, Meera Ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, we are eager to listen to your few precious words. And very important that you are here today. Thank you once again for it. Though uh, DG couldn't make it, we are eager 
to hear your opinion on MHM. Mira ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so glad uh, uh, that I have a subject that I can uh, really frankly speak on. So I'm happy to know that uh, District 3190 is uh, doing this menstrual hygiene management from the past four years. And I have actually touched around 10,000 girls in 24 cities. And now they are uh, uh, trying to reach more people. And then, um, and it is under the seventh focus area, the preservation of the environment also comes in this. So I'm very happy you're doing this. And I'm with you all. I, I'll do my best from whatever I can. And the question arises, why we have this comes and what is uh, this has to do with preserving the environment. First thing I want to tell is about the hygiene thing, what you're doing. This COVID thing has brought about an awareness around the world about hygiene. So everybody knows what is hands, washing hands, bacteria, virus, everything. So that I think will make uh, things easier for you to explain it to um, uh, and uh, reach the rural areas, it will become much easier. And second thing, why we have to think of preserving the earth or you know what these landfills are getting filled with this waste and it is not uh, bi biodegradable, some of them what we use and it's only single use and being disposed. But, so first of all, I want to tell we all of us as uh, humans, uh, we have taken earth for granted. We have just exploited it. We have, uh, I think with the technology, with the um, uh, mining and whatever, with the pollution, everything, we have taken maximum uh, benefit from earth and totally exploited it. And we have forgotten and we think we are the only species on this earth, but we have forgotten there are so many other species on this mother. We aren't the only children of mother earth. So somewhere we have to, in the future, I think this COVID has uh, given a wonderful lesson for all of us to learn. So we have to take care of ourselves and the environment. Otherwise, in the future, we don't know whether human race will exist because if we go on this space. So definitely, we have to learn to respect and uh, also um, take care of our environment and especially our Earth. And also, Earth is a home and the planet Earth is a home for 7 billion people. And I say this is only home. We don't have any other planet to go if something comes or uh, something attacks us outside from earth. So we have to take care of this and uh, we can't take it so easily. And there are so many other species, whether we, uh, we are just seeing, uh, talking about only ourselves, but then uh, we also have to think about the oceans, how many species are there, the birds which fly in the skies and the air and so many land animals which stay in the forest. So we, we think we are the only ones and we need for our comfort, we are doing every possible thing, whether it is construction or anything for that matter. So I think it's high time the earth or the environment or nature is teaching a lesson that we have to respect and uh, uh, coexist with other living beings. Otherwise, the future is impossible for humans. And uh, second thing is, uh, I want to say, uh, we cannot do without earth. We don't have any other home, but also we should realize the earth can do without humans. So that is one thing we have to have in mind. And definitely this is one of the project. I don't say this is, this is also one of the main projects which can also help conserve the environment and the earth. So this has two things. One is educating the uh, uh, girls and about maintaining hygiene and taking care of themselves as well as taking care of the environment. I'm very happy this, uh, you all Rotarians have taken up all, all those who are connected with this project. We have taken up this uh, beautiful uh, project in, uh, in 3190. And I wish you all the best. Let it reach each and every district and each and every person who has to be uh, educated with this, who doesn't have an idea about hygiene or whatever it is. And I wish you all the best. And thank you so much for everything. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, yeah. ma'am, for those precious words and for all your interest in the project. And inevitably said, uh, COVID really is a leveler across the globe. Whoever thought that from USA to Australia to India to China, all of us at the same time will undergo the same symptoms and same problem. What a leveler, what an eye opener for each and every one of us. And we must heed 
to this nature's task that has been given to us. And in doing so, uh, I'm so very happy to see so many people coming in uh, across the world. So uh, let me, though Nisha has acknowledged and has greeted each one of them, but to the people who are joining us now, let me welcome Dr. Emily from Nigeria uh, and Anjali Lo from Australia. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, ma'am. Uh, Rotarian Sharmila from London. Uh, we have uh, our very own friend, Sherin Bond from Dhaka. Uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, we have uh, Bindi. I just saw Bindi from Dhaka once again. Uh, I think she is a DGE. Uh, so welcome, Bindi. And we also saw, I mean, I also saw Rotractor Amrita from Nepal. Other than that, I also saw Gitanjali. Hi, Gitanjali. Uh, so, hi, uh, hi, hi, hi. hi. <laughs> I uh, have uh, uh, Samiksha. Samiksha is actually, we are all from the same group, uh, Action Group for Sustainable Development, uh, Rotary Sustainable Development Group. Uh, so uh, she is the president of MMRCPK. Uh, welcome, Samiksha. Wow, Samiksha. Welcome, welcome. So uh, nice. We to also have, have uh, Shirley Ho from. Uh, Subang, Malaysia, who has joined us. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> and the dignitaries and the friends uh, all across. Uh, nice to share a very important, a very thought-provoking subject. So let's get down to this. Uh, I think I must now um, call on uh, Nisha. Uh, the lady who has been really, really been at it for the past four years without, uh, without relenting, without relenting. That's the only word which comes to my mind, without losing hope, without uh, staying quiet, with full-on exuberance and full-on energy. Nisha is a true Rotarian in heart and in spirit. She has been conducting awareness uh, programs on menstrual hygiene management in government schools, in residentials, at offices, wherever she can put our foot in and put her thought in. She has been trying to do that for the past four years, dear friends. Her basic aim is to bring in a behavioral change. It should not be a change that I shift to cloth pads or I shift to the cup just for the heck of it, just for trying out a fire. No, it has to be a behavioral change. And that's been her bottom line. And she has been trying to educate women across, whether it's the urban or whether it's the rural or whether it is the semi-urban society of women she reaches out to. She believes that if she can introduce and shift, she can influence. And if she can convince a lot of us, we in totality together would help to decrease the toxic content that we load onto Mother Earth. This is exactly what Meera Prasad was just now talking about. We unknowingly, subconsciously, unconsciously dump it onto Mother Earth. And we call her Mother Earth. That's the irony. And that's what she wants to tackle in and out. She believes that waste management is a passe. Dear friends, it means she feels talking only about waste management will not help us. What will help us is to stop generating waste management. Stop generating waste. You don't have to worry about the management. That is what her entire philosophy is all about. She has been an integral part, which I also was a part here in making Grama Lakshmi Woman, the self-help group woman, start what we call today as Aram pads, cloth pads, reusable cloth pads. A whole bunch of women were motivated by her and her team trained again and again and again and today, Aram pads are going across Karnataka. So this is Nisha Bellare, dear friends. For you, many of you know her because of her exuberance, but a small little introduction into her grit for the last four years. Nisha for you. Yes, Nisha. Thank you, Saparna. 
thank you for those kind words and uh, i hope from today's session uh, most of us can take this as a project in their own clubs and in their countries and uh, we are there always to help handhold you and uh, work a program for you in your clubs before i can uh, introduce my team uh, shiv can you play that video for us please sure yeah. uh, the efforts of the last 4 years have been put into a small video it's a 3 minute video please bear with us but uh, we couldn't reduce it further because it was 4 years of hard work which has gone into it so um if the audio is not right i will probably talk to uh, talk you through it uh, when as and when you see the uh, uh, video yeah shiv you can start the so this is the uh, uh, road track you can let it play yeah yeah so that's the uh, uh, logo that the road tractors came up with Uh, on their own this is one of our first awareness programs in mount carmel college with dr minakshi this was in an apartment complex and green the red is a campaign that has been a big support for rotary uh, when so if you notice all of us here today we're all wearing green and red which talks about greening your periods making your periods eco friendly so um, all of us today from 3190 are wearing a color combination of green and red uh, make our uh, periods eco friendly <clears throat> this is a very participated in a hill station for a green event and we talked to the commissioner there apartment complexes we have lavanya there with us lata with us and all of us have worked for the last 4 years uh, at ground zero uh, without holding any designations we were simple rotarians and uh, we believed in it from day one and we even if it was a group of five or six i think we said let's go and talk to them you know we traveled across the city even to talk to five or six people that's our somya shrikan talking to the young girls this is in a corporate where we were invited for an event that's our lata krishna that's sindhu her brain child green the red is her brain child so we are eternally grateful to sindhu that's lata krishna the tejasvi surya this is for a hospital where we did an awareness program that's dr minakshi me and dr aruna murlidhar who's also a rotarian this is for a marathon that we participated in <clears throat> yes that's dj disha that's dr minakshi bharat talking to uh, the patanjali people one nice thing about dr minakshi is i have traveled with her for sessions and she catches people at railway stations at bus stops and if she sees a girl who is in the menstrual age she stops them and talks to them so that's minakshi bharat for you she can talk to anybody anywhere about periods these are a couple of sessions that we did from the mhm team just to get the word of menstruation around suparna koshal herself is a happiness coach and has great uh, experience in the advertising background and this is what we did in the last 4 years we saved the earth from a lack in 8000 disposable sanitary napkins so i'm so proud to take announce my team today because of which we are here and uh, i would like to introduce my team going forward so uh, my my aim uh, and desire in this year for mhm is to make it a multi district and a global project 
with District 3190 leading from the front from all the experiences that we've gained. And we're willing to hold uh, handhold clubs across the globe and share the knowledge that we've learned uh, and help you make this a project which is successful and make a big noise about MHM all across. Of course, we have Dr. Minakshi Bharat. She's a gynecologist. Uh, you haven't started screen share. I'm sorry. Okay, can you see this now? All right. So we have Dr. Minakshi Bharat, who is uh, our, who's a gynecologist by profession and uh, the first lady who has represented MHM in District 3190. Um, full screen. How do I do the full screen? It's okay, I think we should. All right. So uh, we have Minakshi Bharat, who did, who is, who is gynecologist by profession and the past. Uh, MHM uh, district chair. Thank you, Dr. Minakshi, for uh, setting the stage for us. And we hope that we can uh, uh, take this uh, forward and follow your footsteps. We have Suparna Goshal, who's a district MHM member. Key area of responsibility is public image, and she's promised to write cover all articles for us to parana on all the projects that we do because she's been saying you guys have been doing so much work but how does everybody know about it why doesn't anybody talk about it so we said suparna here it is this is your baby now so she's very gracefully accepted it and we have Anne Somya Shrikant, first lady of one of the oldest clubs of uh, uh, Bangalore Rotary Club of Indiranagar and she has uh, done awareness programs in her own way um, for the last few years. Today, she's an integral member of uh, uh, the MHM team. She has very gracefully accepted to um, help us build a back end. We've realized that you know, all these years we've gone out and spoken to uh, people across, uh, and uh, but we've not really compiled the data. So she brought this to our notice and she's willingly taken up the responsibility of helping us build a strong back end and the training tools that I'll be sharing with you going forward. Lavanya Shankar is uh, my uh, co-PE, president-elect. So we're going to be presidents together next year. And uh, she's been there with us from day one, from the first go of the word MHM. Lavanya has been there with us. And uh, she's taken up the responsibility of training, creating content. Um, anybody needs training sessions, she's the lady you should reach out to. We have Rotarian Usha Shankar, who also comes to the team with great experience. And uh, she has decades of experience working with women empowerment, girls, uh, the hygiene. And uh, she's taken responsibility at the uh, MHM team on project implementation in rural areas. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Rotarian Usha, for taking on that responsibility. And then we have the MHM support team. How can I forget them? We have Rotractor uh, Asta Singh, who has formed her own committee in the Rotract group. And she recently conducted an awareness program with 75 Rotractors only from 3190 who attended the awareness program. She is a super rock star and uh, very quick to work on. Gets uh, and, and we feel the youth is needed to take this message forward. She's a connect between the Rotary and the Rotract. Then we have Lata Krishna, who's also been there with us from day one. We have Rotarian Uma. She's our own club member. Her daughter, Rotractor Gautami. Uh, Rotarian Asha from Baswanguri Club. And our own club member, again, Rotarian Chaya. Thank you all so much. It's all your hard work, which has given us the confidence today to present a training module for participants ac across the globe. Thank you so much for trusting the concept and taking it forward as if it's your own. So how have we done this? We have done this, uh, like Suparna said, that we just don't believe in um, going and doing awareness programs. We also want to measure the impact. So we start with creating the awareness on so many times uh, girls and women in rural areas and even in the urban areas, we realize that they are not aware of various uh, eco-friendly options that are that can be made available because they're not right now available in supermarkets or pharmacies. Um, so we go and create awareness programs, we connect the vendors to the uh, beneficiaries because we, the, the, you will understand why I'm saying this because the training program that Dr. Minakshi and Lavanya will take you through is so impactful that at least 10 to 15% of the audience want to switch to a re reusable product 
immediately after the session is over then we hand hold them which is also very important it's very easy for somebody to say i want to switch to a cloth pad or a cup or um, you know stop using disposable but then they do come to a roadblock after the first month or the second month and then only because we want to stop sending disposables to the landfills we've set up a, a support group to hand hold them until the time they are confident and they become evangelists and take the message forward and then we go back to them after 3 months or 4 months and ask them what their feedback was measure the impact and that's how you saw that we you know uh, we saved about a lakh and 8000 uh, disposable sanitary napkins going forward so this is a four prong approach for us to uh, we feel that only when we do this we have completed the cycle and managed to manage to take the word out So, what are the training tools and kits that we can provide to all the trainers here today? Is the training analysis form. So, when you go into awareness programs, how many people attended your session? Uh, how many of them were girls? How many of them were women? And uh, th that is something that uh, you know we, it'll it'll be a nice thing to for us to analyze whether we are talking to the right audience and whether it's accepted. Uh, that's the outreach data collection form that i was talking about the training analysis form is for you all to fill back later uh, on how whether you like this training program and if there were there are any other topics that you would like us to include in the training we will send that out to you uh, in a couple of days the feedback form is done 3 months uh, is is uh, used 3 months after the beneficiary receives the uh, product to go back to her and ask her whether she's actually using it and if she's comfortable there's a training kit that we provide right now it is applicable only to the indian participants which contains a uterus model a sample of a cloth pad and a sample of a menstrual cup our um, uh, aim is basically from the environmental impact saying that we do not want to generate the toxic waste uh, and we don't want to send them to the, send it to the landfill so that is why you know we're talking about uh, cloth pads we talk about menstrual cups So, what are the upcoming events for the year? Is we want to roll out the menstrual hygiene management program in 18 villages uh, in uh, the outskirts of Bangalore. That is where Grama Lakshmi is set, and um, uh, Rotarian Usha Gauri, with her experience, will be chairing this project. With her experience, we are in the process of working, putting a team together. The idea, the approach will be the same four prong approach uh, in the uh, in the 18 villages. We will be reaching out to 2000. 500 girls and women in those villages and it will be a two or a three year program the total uh, population of girls and women are 5300 but this year phase 1 we are taking 2500 we are also working with an agency thank you to um, uh, sheetal somya's daughter who has helped us connect with an agency who specializes in uh, working with uh, girls and we are working with people with uh, special challenges and when we talk to them they love this idea of taking menstrual hygiene management to the specially able because they are usually the uh, you know the ignored lot so they are helping us build a special curriculum for them and we will be conducting training programs for the specially able too we would like to uh, culminate all our efforts on 28th of may 2021 uh, by conducting a menstrual hygiene summit and we would it be inviting all of you again to be a part of that summit some of you can be speakers some of you can talk about projects that you've done and it will be a fantastic summit that we can work uh, together on Uh, we also believe that in rotary there are so many other there are so many verticals and for mhm to be successful we feel it's a collaborated effort between the literacy the wins team and the environment team because mhm is a part of all these verticals so we will be Uh, bringing all of them together on a single platform on 28th of may uh, 2021 and culminating our efforts all our efforts all our efforts whoever is here today and we'll talk about our experiences and make our voice heard so this is the upcoming plans and uh, that is my presentation thank you suparna for the uh, uh, for the opportunity to letting me present and over to you Okay, we have uh, Rotarian President Rose from Zimbabwe with us. She just joined in. Hello, ma'am. Uh, Hello, and thank you for welcoming me. Thanks. Have thank you, ma'am. It's our honor for you for to see you out here. Thank you so much. Uh, Suparna, we have uh, DGE Dolly also is joined in. Welcome, DGE Dolly. Dolly. Uh, thank you very much. Hi, hello everyone. Hello. Okay. 
now to get down to the training part of the entire story. And, uh, we've heard uh, Nisha just gave us the prelude. And now the training will actually, the training uh, entire presentation that you guys can go through will be taken by Dr. Meenakshi Bharat and Lavanya. To begin with, Dr. Meenakshi Bharat, who is actually a, a gynecologist by profession and an environmentalist by passion. Uh, you heard Nisha tell her that she can talk to anybody and everybody whom she feels is worthy of understanding not to add toxic to this world. If she finds them, she is a beautiful orator in her own capacity as a doctor and the way mellifluously she goes out to tell and teach us is really wonderful to hear. Her aim, she's an environmentalist at heart, her aim is to reduce this toxic waste which we all create by single-use period products. This is what she's going to talk to you, dear friends, and the huge impact, the negative impact that we are making. Mind it, the negative impact that we are making on the world with the use of single-use disposable period products. Dr. Meenakshi, over to you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, the screen has not uh, come on yet. You can probably try once again, please. It's come? Uh, no, it is still showing as a black screen. You can uh, double click it, please. It's showing on my screen. Uh, you can probably uh, 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 stop share sc screening and try once again, please. Okay. Meanwhile, welcome to Rotarian Bindi. Yes. Now it's visible. You can start. Uh, it's gone back. Uh, you'll have to. Yes. yes. Perfect. Please go ahead. Come. Please go ahead. Okay. So menstrual hygiene and world over, we have this problem about, um, you know, not being able to uh, not uh, this shame around menstrual hygiene somewhere. We have to do two things. We have to remove the shame away from menstrual hygiene. And so because we have this wonderful teach program, we can reach out to all the children across the world on the teach program and explain to them what is menstruation and how we need to be proud of menstruation. The other thing is we need to remove that thing about period poverty, not having enough uh, you know, products to use during our periods. Those are two major issues that are world over, whether you are in America, England, UK, Nigeria, India, or you know, in the Southeast Asian countries, we still have women who do not have period products for uh, using during their periods. So growing up is exciting. And like men grow up and have a beard and a moosh and are very proud of their moosh and their voice becomes hoarse when their voice cracks, we need the same thing to be told to the girls that we are very proud of you when you are growing up. And it starts from age seven when the girls start getting their permanent you know, teeth and a good smile. They start gaining their height. And around 9, 10, 11, the breast development begins. Their armpits, there is hair growth on their armpits. And it is at that time that we actually need to talk to our girls and explain to them as to what is periods and what are the products that are available to use. And then the periods start. And when the periods start, because the girls gain height, they get a lovely shape to their bodies. You know, their waistline becomes smaller, their bottom line becomes a little bigger. And then there is a facial glow that comes to them they move away from being that little tubby girl to becoming a young woman. And that's the time when they start having disagreements with their parents. It's then you know that your girl has grown up. And then because of the hormonal changes, you have acne and oily hair and premenstrual syndromes. So this is the time that the mother and the society and the father needs to support the girl as she is undergoing all these hormonal changes. All right. Uh, I have to thank Asta 
for making this presentation. You must be wondering why I'm using this, but she had made such a nice presentation, I decided to use it. So the female reproductive system consists of two ovaries, two tubes, one uterus, a cervix and a vagina. And it is really a beautiful thing. It is like this. This model is something that we ask everybody to take with you to explain to the children, to the mothers, because most of us don't know what's happening inside our body. So periods are usually once in 28 to 35 to 45 days. There is, it doesn't work like, you know, uh, on the hour every hour. There is no clockwork there. And when we start our periods, we say menarche, and it happens for close to 35 to 40 years. And most girls will attain menarche be between 10 and 16. It's happening now because we are making our children obese that they actually attain menarche earlier. So don't allow your girl child to become more than 30 kgs when she is seven or eight years. Please don't make them obese because that will result in her starting her periods earlier. And if you start your periods earlier, you have only two years to attain height because the bones fuse two years after menarche. All right. So most of us are not happy with our periods, but periods actually last you two months in a year. So a lot of our lives we have spent having our periods. So we need to mentally uh, get used to the fact that we need to be happy during our periods and we will be happy during our periods if the products we use are comfortable for us. All right. So what happens? Five days after the periods have started, the lining of the uterus has become thin. This is called the endometrium. And then because of the hormones that are being produced by the ovary, the lining starts becoming thicker. This then gets blood supply and then day 16 and around between day 25 and day 30, the endometrium starts shedding and that's when you get your periods. And at the end of your periods, your endometrium is back to being thin. This is just to explain as to what happens to your uterus during your periods. Now, all of us know that we get periods and all of us believe that we are bleeding. We are bleeding like, you know, the river, is flowing through our body. But actually, if you look at it, all that we bleed is a peg of blood. That is 60 ml of blood. So don't get worried. Next time, you don't have to feel tired that you are, because it's a mental trauma that, oh, I'm bleeding so much. And every pad, the disposable sanitary pad that we use can hold 5 ml of blood. So therefore, you are going to use between 12 and 15 pads every month. Imagine how many pads you are using. And 1.9 billion women in the world who are menstruating, at this point, we will have them, not everybody uses disposable sanitary pads, but we still produce a lot of waste. How to maintain personal hygiene during periods? Please tell all the girls to have a daily bath, they need to wash their private parts twice a day. They need to change their sanitary napkins once in six to eight hours. And they need to wash their hands before they change and wash after they change. And wear clean undergarments. Also keep your nails trim so that you don't add that dirt that is under your nails to your body. Also, do, do not use harsh soap use simple you know soaps not very complicated ones and not very smelly so myths about the periods is one you don't actually need to rest during your periods there is no objection to washing your hair during your periods nothing happens to the pickles they don't get spoiled and you can go and pray wherever you are even if you don't go to the church the temple or the mosque you can pray and you can definitely enter the kitchen. There is nothing impure about the blood that comes out during periods. And there is nothing impure about you during your periods. Okay, so what do you use is what we need to understand. 
Sanitary napkins and tampons are being used by one third of the population in the world. And what we thought was advantages years ago has now turned out to be the big disadvantage because the sanitary pads have become thinner and thinner, therefore more plastic and less cotton. 95% of the pads are now made of plastic and to uh, cover up the perfumes, there are perfumes and all to cover up the smell that comes in the pads. The disadvantages are that these pads, when they are thrown and they land up in the landfill, they tend to get burnt. And when they get burnt, they produce something called as dioxins and furans, which are just not good for anybody's health, let alone the women's health. And the pad is so close to the vagina, it is, and the vagina is just a single membrane inside. It, it tends to absorb all the things that are all the chemicals that are in the bag. So it's a big problem for all of us that we use this. So because it's non-biodegradable, not reusable, not recyclable, and these pads bloat in the water, that's why you get the ads which say that this pad is so good that it can absorb all the water in the lake. So one pad is equal into four plastic bags. So imagine, how much you are throwing away every month. Each of us would use about 180 pads a year and we are throwing it. When we throw it into the sewage lines, it gets expanded one is to 30 and clogs the drains. And then we have to have these manual scavengers who go in and declog the drain. It's terrible. So next time you are in your apartment complex or in your university, and the drain gets clogged, make sure you are not using a disposable sanitary napkin or a tampoon. And so you are clear in your mind that you haven't been responsible for that block in the drain. So please try and get to reusables. I want Rotarians, I want Rotractors to all get to reusables and not promote disposables at all. The more garbage we create, the more we have to manage it. And secondly, both the reusables, the cloth pad and the menstrual cup is so comfortable. I wish I was younger. I am menopausal and I didn't get this opportunity to use this lovely thing called a menstrual cup. Those of you who are fortunate and are still bleeding, don't give up this opportunity to have you know, liberating periods. You need to understand that and we'll be talking about it much more. All right. So new age cloth pads are what has come back. So when the pad industry started making disposable sanitary pads and all of us were using cloth, they had to do something to make us change from cloth pads to disposable sanitary napkins. And they said cloth pads, are not hygienic because you're drying it inside the house, you're using old cloth and it's not good for your health. They completely brainwashed us. And because in India itself, it's a 17,000 crore industry, they can get the best actors and actresses to come and advertise for the disposable sanitary napkins. But we cannot do it because this costs very little and when it costs very little there is not enough to get the big superstars to come and talk to us about it so new age cloth pads have the advantage that they are made of new cloth that they have a leak proof material behind so that you do not leak and your clothes don't stain they're economical um yeah you know 400 rupees is uh, for a set of pads is um, you know not not even uh, ten dollars half five dollars and it's available to look nice and pretty and most importantly it is so comfortable to use wearing the cloth pad you can wear it in your panty you can store it without any problems and when you store it in your bag on the way home when you have changed then it does not smell the cloth pad does not smell and it is easy to wash and easy to dry. The thing is that you need to dry it in the sun. The sun is the best disinfectant. 
So between old and new, no leak proof material was there before. We then used to stain our clothes and that used to be embarrassing. Now with the leak proof material on the pad, you can easily not have any staining. White discharge is something all women suffer from, but white discharge is normal. It usually happens during the ovulation time and it's usually not stinky. But if you have itching, if you have discharge that is creating um, a, an odor, then you need to go to your gynecologist and check it out. Ideally, all of us will have some discharge just before periods, just after periods, and mid-cycle during ovulation. All right. So pain during periods is a very common occurrence. And this pain, we have to deal with it. We have to divert our attention. We can use a hot water bottle to reduce the pain. We can take a tablet of paracetamol once in four to six hours, and that will help to reduce the pain. If you are very active and if you do a lot of exercise, then you will find that you, you are comfortable. Now, when you take the tablet of paracetamol, don't take it on an empty stomach. Have a banana before you eat it so that you don't land up with gastritis because paracetamol can produce gastritis. If despite taking two tablets of paracetamol once in six hours, your pain is not reduced, that is when you need to go and see your doctor and get a little higher dose of medicines. But otherwise, pain during periods is something that most people will tolerate. Some will have difficulty, but if you train yourself and you're really active during the month, then you don't get pain, it is reduced. All right, so menarche to marriage or menarche to 18, 20 years is when you will use the clock pad. And once you are 18, an adult, you can make the decision to use the menstrual cup. Once you are married because you have had intercourse, there is no problem in inserting the cup into the vagina. Thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, I think doctor put it very, very simply, very nicely uh, as to what happens for a woman's body right from the age of 10 till we attain menopause, which is 50 to 50 to 55. The stages have been explained beautifully to us and the ruckus that we are creating in the environment has also been shown by us. Before... Uh, Please do think about them. Please do activate your thoughts on them. Please take the project forward. This is our request to all of you out here. Now there are some solutions to it. And that will be presented by Rotarian Lavanya Shankar. Lavanya Shankar, incidentally, is a laughter yoga therapist. Don't we need that laughter when we're in periods because of our mindset? I think all of us require that amount of humor to ease out our pains. It's all our mindset, right? Uh, Lavanya has been a charter member of Pandana Club in Bangalore from day one. It's almost six years that she has been a Rotarian and she has donned many, uh, uh, many a directorial uh, debut. I need to read it out from a piece of paper. She has served as the youth services director the international service director, the magazine editor, uh, then she has been secretary, and now today she is the president-elect and, of course, currently holds the membership chair. She has been active, as uh, Nisha said in her talk, she has been active from day one of MHM, which opened when nobody had any designations, but everybody had a passion to work. So over to you, Lavanya. Thank you, Suparna, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, yeah, I'm a laughter yoga therapist. I'm a seeker. I keep learning a lot of things. Uh, I'm a counselor and a psychotherapist by profession. Laughter yoga is something that I learned for um, using in my therapy or just, just sort of interest that it, uh, I can just uh, be with children and be with people and make them happy. And I'm oh. 
I keep learning a lot of things. Haveni, I forgot to tell you, you are a big storyteller. Yes. Yeah. So I am yes, updating yes. whatever I, I interests me like that. Uh, so I, again, menstrual hygiene has been one of those topics that I've heard first time when I heard uh, Dr. Meena Chibarat and Nisha take a session for the ladies of three one nine zero four years back. in asha madam's period um, i wanted to just be a part of this and uh, i think i just immediately joined the team and uh, in whatever way i could do i have tried to spread it to a lot of people and um, today yeah today i will present to you like doctor has already given you the uh, impact of these uh, single use napkins on your health on the environment and how it actually Uh, pollutes our uh, land our air our uh, you know everything is polluted now we are like uh, polluting our uh, land so whatever is grown there is also not very uh, healthy for us so like that uh, all the impacts on the environment and on our health that the rashes that we feel uh, when we wear these uh, single use napkins and the foul smell we have all this is because of the uh, chemicals that are present in those napkins so do we have to really still suffer with all those rashes and the stinking smell in that pad and all that uh, even today or do we have better options to switch to and and these are much more healthier for our, our own body and we are also being uh, very conscious about throwing Uh, these sanitary napkins which take almost uh, 800 years to disintegrate so it it is our responsibility now to make sure that we are not uh, spoiling the environment too so or do we have solutions i mean many people it why did we use because they were very convenient they had uh, uh, they had wings they there was uh, it was very easy to wear so now there are options that are available that are just like the sanitary napkins they look just like that but they are much more healthier for us so the first option that we are going to talk about is the reusable cloth pads they come in wide varieties and uh, different uh, types see see you get sanitary napkins like these in different shapes and it can hold uh, there are night pads and there are even uh, pads which uh, look just like um, you know a handkerchief which can be dried in the sun like if we go to villages they uh, they are very shy about these things and this can be dried and nobody will know it is a reusable cloth pad so the reusable cloth pads are um, the healthier and the greener version uh, to the sanitary napkins they are uh, leak proof because they are made of uh, leak proof material that uh, they are also materials that are uh, coming with uh, the uh, you know these napkins these, these napkins will have a leak proof material inside there are ones which are coming with a jacket and you can put cotton uh, uh, pure cotton material that will not have give you any rashes or give, give you any irritation so these will have a leak proof material that usually they use in making umbrellas that will make sure that uh, you i think we are having a problem with uh, lavanya yeah uh, we have lost her actually oh lavanya are you back yeah, we lost I... you for a few seconds you can please go on now okay so the amount of money that we send uh, spent on the sanitary uh, pads in 10 years is somewhere between 12 to 45000 rupees and uh, the amount of money that we spend on cloth pads for 10 years is around 1500 to 2000 rupees because you can just own four or five the like dr meenakshi bharat said there is a kit that you will get uh, for 3 400 rupees and uh, you can keep changing them probably once in two years so even like that you will be spending very less uh, money compared to the sanitary napkins next slide next slide 
so how do we uh, so the thing about how do we wash these sanitary napkins because the disposable ones were so easy to use we could use it and we should just wrap it in a paper and throw it now we are uh, we have to reuse these pads so we have to wash it so there is an easy method to wash it also there is nothing really a big deal about uh, washing these once you have used it, the soil pads you can put them in cold water in a small uh, mug or a small bucket and uh, you can leave it there for 30 minutes and then after that uh, very uh, softly you can scrub with your hands with mild detergent and then the very important thing about this is to dry it in natural sun so uh, drying it in the sun is very important because that's when you will not have any rashes or you will not have any um, infections that uh, usually uh, is a, uh, uh, if you don't uh, dry it in the uh, sun and once in a while you could uh, add a bit of vinegar and wash it too so these are very convenient even to use it when you are traveling you could uh, you would always get uh, you could fold it like that and keep it in your travel pouch and um, usually an average woman needs around 6 to 8 pads per cycle so each of this um, uh, pad will last you for 2 to 4 years so you're not you're spending much much lesser uh, compared to uh, a sanitary napkin and these are uh, available in pretty colors pretty designs as you can see that everything is uh, uh, very nice the designs are very nice very comfortable designs and these also don't move so they're very convenient for you and then they're made of layers of cotton that can absorb and there is no uh, problem uh, of leakage too and coming to the second solution um, which is reusable menstrual cups these are also uh, uh, the most, uh, I, think, I think for women it is the best uh, friend because it, it gives you so much of comfort that you'll forget that you have a period. And, uh, and again, these come with so many varieties. They come with stems, they come, uh, you know, they, there are materials which um, uh, are suitable for uh, athletes. They can use a... a there are many, many like that, and they are also very colorful and made. Uh, these are made of soft medical grade uh, materials and uh, like metal like silicon, which is actually used in the feeding bottles, nipples of the babies that we use. And these uh, one cup can, uh, it, it is easy to use once you, uh, they collect the menstrual flow, uh, unlike the napkin that is absorbing the uh, blood, you can collect it. Uh, the blood is collected in it you can just uh, wash it and reuse it back so it is much much more convenient than a um, sanitary uh, napkin so what happens is this uh, cup once you insert into your vagina it uh, it has small uh, uh, holes here so it makes a suction and it stays there it uh, so, uh, so you will not even feel that you are wearing a cup and there will be no uh, worry about uh, the leakage to there. And uh, the one, one more advantage of using a cup is that you don't have to uh, remove it uh, if you have to pass urine or if you have to pass stool. So that is another biggest advantage. The blood is collected there and it's easy to use, easy to uh, insert back. The next slide, please. So one cup can be used for up to eight years and it saves you a lot of money and saves uh, a lot on the, the in the dumps that we have the dump in the landfills too and money spent on a sanitary napkin as i said can range from 12 to uh, 45000 rupees here you are only spending about uh, 700 to 3000 rupees so once you buy a, a menstrual cup you can use it for um, almost eight to ten years so uh, the amount of money you're spending is very, very less. It is very pocket friendly also for you. Next slide. How to use the cup. So uh, once you get your periods, uh, please do not use the cups before you get your periods. So once your periods have started, it is very easy to use the cups. To insert, you, you can do, uh, you, you sit in a squat position. You can do a C fold a C fold like this or a punch down like this. And 
you can insert it into your vagina and uh, then when you are removing it once um, once you feel like taking it out and uh, emptying the cup you can uh, just pinch the um, bottom of the cup and it will release the suction and uh, you can empty the cup and uh, uh, reuse it back just wash it with my tap water that is enough and um, our vagina is not a sterile organ so there is no need to sterilize the cup you can just wash it with normal water tap water and uh, once you are done with uh, your periods you could um, clean it uh, and put it back in the uh, pouches that are provided along with the cups and you don't have to worry till your next periods so um, insertion needs a little bit of uh, lubrication your own menstrual blood would be enough or if you find it difficult you could use coconut oil or vaseline and like i said you can squat uh, and sit and we'll be able to insert very easily in the beginning maybe in the first two um, uh, times uh, first two cycles you will there is a learning curve you might find it difficult but uh, uh, once you are get used to it i think menstrual cup is the best uh, friend that you will have next slide so just like i mentioned that um, a menstrual cup can be uh, you, you in the beginning you can just uh, don't try too much in the uh, if you are getting uh, you know uh, hurt or something like that maybe give it give yourself time relax deep breathing and all that you can do and uh, first first time when you are using you can squat and use and later you will get used to how Uh, easily you can insert all that you can do and a menstrual uh, or vaginal cavity is around 3 uh, inches and this cup is around 2 inches so there is no worry that uh, uh, it uh, it will hurt you or anything like that the next slide please so very uh, things that we have heard when you have given awareness programs everywhere is that uh, we are very scared to insert something foreign body into our uh, vagina so there is nothing to worry is it not going to hurt me um, i'm i'm going to insert it into my vagina so these kind of questions we have asked and there is actually nothing to worry about if a woman is comfortable with intercourse inserting this cup shouldn't be a problem and a menstrual cup is much much smaller than a size of a baby's head at the child but so really nothing to worry our vagina can accommodate it and as i mentioned there is a learning curve uh, to insert and to remove and take it easy and uh, initially you may feel a little messy and uh, you feel uh, i'm not able to uh, wear it properly all these things so there is um, like i mentioned take a deep breath uh take it easy and um you can uh, if you think that uh you start off when uh, you know you get a period and you are at home you can start off on those days and then uh, probably if you feel uh, i'm not i've not worn it properly or it may leak or anything like that so use it when you are at home and you can also back it up with a cloth pad if you feel uncomfortable so that in the first two months until you learn um until you learn the right way to uh, wear it so that is the learning curve and i am sure everyone uh, in the first two cycles will learn and after that they feel the most uh, comfortable with it and uh, yeah next so there is there are questions like uh, can an unmarried lady use it uh, is it going to um, do any harm to the hymen so hymen rupturing is a big myth and uh, it is a tissue that expands and and it grows as it grows larger so hymen will um expand even when we are doing sports activities we are cycling we are dancing we, anything and any, anybody who's very active this hymen expansion will happen it is a very natural process so uh if you think that uh, uh, um unmarried girl cannot use it uh, as an adult at, after 18 they can take the uh, decision to use it until then we recommend that they use cloth pads and after marriage you can use the menstrual cups next one so 
All, all of us, I mean, when we asked how much do I bleed a lot, I bleed uh, Ganga, Jamna and so much, all that they say, and uh, how much actually we bleed is around 10 to 80 ml, and that is almost like one to six uh, teaspoons um, of menstrual fluid. So uh, how, why was it looking so, so much and that big quantity is because it was spreading on the uh, sanitary napkin and it used to look like as if you have bled so much and with the cup you will understand that actually uh, even on your heaviest days the cup will will, uh, will not be completely full so only when you want to remove and so sometimes we have heard women who have worn it for 10 uh, you know 10 hours 12 hours so nothing to worry about so it will not uh, be full so you will learn how much each one is different and you will learn how um, when to remove the cup and when to um, you know um, empty the cup and wear it back and uh, sometimes we have also seen that there are a lot of clots and all that coming that is the tissue that uh, you know the cervical mucus and vaginal secretions that uh, that is coming so um, this cup can also help uh, hold all that nothing to worry about and each cup actually has the capacity to hold 15 to 20 ml of blood. So um, you, uh, the cup, I, like I mentioned, will not be uh, full. Next one. So some of the greatest advantages I have seen of a menstrual cup is that you can wear it while you're swimming and, and especially for people who play a lot of sports, this is very, very comfortable. And uh, while sleeping, because uh, I, I, with the sanitary napkin, I feel uh, most of the women just sleep in, you know, in a very uncomfortable position. With this, I think you can sleep however comfortable you feel. And uh, you can carry, well, if you're traveling, uh, the amount of water to clean it is if you just have one bottle of water, it's more than enough. You can wash it with very little water. If by chance you don't even have that much of water, you can just wipe it with uh, a tissue and uh, wear it back. And uh, it's the most comfortable. It is uh, very effective and easy to use. No trash created, no smell of blood. Menstrual blood does not smell. So there's no um, worry about the foul spell that we used to get when we were using the sanitary napkin. And uh, it also reduces the bacterial uh, infections and less rashes that you feel the chemicals in the sanitary napkins were creating the uh, rashes uh, and all the infections that we were uh, having earlier. So now we will be uh, getting rid of all those infections and uh, increased feel of uh, cleanliness will be there. The uncomfortableness that we experience with the sanitary napkins is no more there. And um, um, it is a one-time purchase. It, it costs you like uh, 800 to 1000 rupees and it lasts you for 10 years. So I think that's the most and um, biggest advantages of these things that we are uh, using, you know, um, taking care of our health, taking care of our pocket. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we're not also throwing uh, the napkins onto the environment. Next slide. Next slide. So, um, and the, the comfort that we have with the menstrual uh, cup is that there is no need to remove it to uh, uh, passing urine or stools, unlike when we have it doing with the pads. And it requires to be removed, uh, uh, you know, uh, lesser times to change or uh, to empty the cup. Um, so it is not affected by rain. So even uh, if you want to enjoy the rains or uh, anything like that, and like I said, swimming also you can do. And uh, uh, last that uh, previous slide. And and um, you you don't feel that you are wearing a cup. So many uh, people forget that they are wearing a cup and they are having periods. So that's the biggest comfort that each woman deserves and uh, people who have been using the cup words have always given us the feedback that now I forget that I have a period 
and uh, it is mobility is another biggest advantage that we have there are no restrictions of movement or irritation in the inner thighs uh, when you are wearing the cup and uh, you can participate in any heavy work and sports including field work uh, swimming and sports etc especially for the women in the uh, villages who are uh, actually doing a lot of hard work uh physical work for them this is a, a boon and this is a blessing and uh, yeah and so there are these um fad dispensing machines and uh, uh of single use sanitary pads that have been uh, circulated in many of the uh, many of the villages by um, rotary clubs we request you to um, and the incinerators to uh, for these uh, pads for disposal uh, maybe it was a, a good idea all year but now i think the incinerators uh, many a times there is no power in the villages and these incinerators actually produce uh, harmful uh, toxic fumes which are not good for our health we are actually spoiling the air so it is not good for the uh, health of the girls who and it is becomes very messy there so request um, the clubs who are uh, donating this uh, you know incinerators to different villages and different schools and colleges to uh, introduce uh, girls and women to these and uh, not give these incinerators there now and um, we can actually provide these uh, villages or the school girls and everybody with uh, these uh, aram pads and uh, the pads which are uh, uh, you know costing us not more than 300 400 rupees and uh, this can this can help them make you know an attitude change about periods and uh, give them awareness and educate them about the hygiene of menstruation and that i think that is the biggest request that we would make to each in every um rotary club so it's time i think we make the switch to a menstrual club uh, menstrual cup and enjoy our periods uh, become trash free rash free and cash free periods and thank you for uh, uh, your patient hearing i hope this was this was very informative for all of you thank you lavanya yes it was informative in the chat box we were getting feedback telling that it was a good presentation lot of information shireen tells it was very informative uh, so does surekha shetty tell uh, dear ladies before we open the forum for question and answers may i invite may i invite rotarian vidya to introduce riw vidya over to you there in vidya yeah are you able to hear me yes yeah yeah uh thank you suparna and i think you're doing a great job of moderating this event today <laughs> thank you so much It's really awesome to hear you here uh and a very good uh, afternoon morning evening as the case may be to our wonderful audience from across the globe uh my felicitations to dr meenakshi and uh, nisha a very impressive and professional approach to this much needed area of menstrual health and what i have seen is it's a end to end very impactful solution and i really like that you have included the differently abled uh, you know segment of the audience so it's really amazing um very quickly to the task that's given to me uh i'll quickly introduce what the rotary international women's group is doing uh this was founded by uh rotarian sharmila nagarajan who is also here with us uh, who is a member of rotary club of london tower hamlets on the 7th of april 2020 in response to the covid pandemic and the idea was to connect with women rotarians across the world and to raise a common women oriented project which is driven by uh the women rotarians of all the five continents uh what happened was a lot lot of it spontaneously we had bi weekly zoom meetings and uh, these were uh, celebrated you know we either had a speaker session or we had uh, working meetings today there is a, a four member team we are hoping uh, the fifth one will join us 
and uh, the members are uh, Sharbila, of course, uh, Denise from our Rotary Club of Ibiza, Spain. Uh, we have Dakshayani, who is from uh, 3230, and uh, myself, Vidya, and we, we are hoping Ines would be joining us from Argentina. And by 20, 2020 May, I think uh, we have already some 240 odd people from across 20 countries covering all the five continents. Uh, the strengths, as we all know about Rotary, it's a global network and it literally covers the whole planet. And uh, nothing better than like-minded people getting together to do something, right? And when we debated what we wanted to do, the common uh, project which came up uh, through consensus was the menstrual hygiene and health because A, it is much required. It is not a problem of underdeveloped or developed countries. It's a problem of women worldwide, right? So that's why this project was chosen. And it also covers not one, but all the seven areas which are the focus of Rotary International. <coughs> so it was uh, unanimously discussed. And to tell you the status today, we are in the process of uh, applying for a Rotary Action Group. I'm very much glad to see, uh, both Sharmila and I are very glad to see what you are doing uh, on ground now. And it's really going to be a lot of learning for us to, to know what you have done and your experiences in shaping this project forward into the Rotary Action Group. We are in the process of applying for the Rotary Action Group. And from a project perspective, we are looking at it at five different levels uh, for participation by various clubs uh, and, and countries. And it could be either one or uh, more than uh, uh, one in the combination. The first is education, awareness, counseling, uh, which needs a uh, lot of people, of course, and time and resources, but lesser on a financial uh, uh, aspect. The second is uh, options available, sampling, product distribution, uh, safe disposal, uh, you know, practices, uh, good hygiene practices, etc. The third would be very targeted product distribution in closed communities so that we could uh, monitor, like, for example, what you're doing, you're looking at 15 uh, villages, for example. Uh, we, we also had Charlie Ruth, who had spoken to us about her outreach with prisons, so that we would be able to monitor and report and build data, which is very, very critical to any project that we're looking at. The fourth is linking it to economic empowerment through manufacturing. I think some of you, are, uh, I think one of the women in the Rotary, uh, Param Saini, she's already doing that where she's setting up small uh, manufacturing units and empowering women. So that, that's another aspect of it. And the last uh, is at a very basic stage, starting maybe by sanitation, making even uh, water and toilets available. So that is the huge spectrum and in, into which we are uh, trying to focus our actions on. So that's the Rotary International Women's Mental Health Group. For more information and to keep in touch with us, do follow us on Facebook. You can just look for RIW Menstrual Health. Yeah. Thank you for giving us the time. And it was really a pleasure to be here today. I think maybe you can have the spotlight on Sharmila. Sharmila is also here. And Dr. Meenakshi is very much part of our group. Dr. Minakshi and Nisha. Yeah. Thank you. I'm done uh, with my briefing for the day. Thank you, Vidya. Sharmila, would you like to say something? Sharmila, you can please unmute yourself. Hi. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. I think Vidya has said um, the idea of our Rotary International Group. And I'm hoping to work together with all of you to make this a global project across all Rotary districts. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is indeed heartening to see and hear from Vidya and from you, Sharmila, that there is a world platform today that we can bank upon, which is the need of the hour. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And let me acknowledge the presence of our home club president, uh, Dr. Shobha. She is just about joined in. Uh, Dr. Shobha, welcome. Uh, Secondly, uh, I see a lot of people giving very good uh, reviews on the presentations which has happened. 
uh, before uh, friends can i request you you can put in a question in your in the chat box we will moderate it and uh, somebody from the platform will be able to answer you it could be nisha it could be dr menakshi it could be lavanya any one of them could answer you uh, but before that i think nisha has an announcement to make nisha can you call can i call you on are you there yes, yes aparna yes right so um, what i wanted to just say is about those 18 villages uh, that we are working on we would love to call upon all of you to uh, help us make it a reality we are coming up with a brainstorming session early next week we will post the link uh, if any one of you want to help us join in for the brainstorming session and uh, rotarians from bangalore please help us in the implementation that's a special request from rotarian usha gauri uh, we will share the link with you all very soon in the same training group thank you suparna i am done next to you. over to you the house is now open for question and answers those who i still haven't seen any question uh, out here i think uh, lata uh, joseph has uh, put up her hand i think she may be having a question yes lata uh, no lata your no. voice is lagging uh, i don't have any question i was just appreciating the way uh, taking uh, uh, hello hello thank you yeah hello can you hear me Yes. Yeah. No, I just put up the hand because the uh, presentation overall presentation was great. Uh, no questions actually. <laughs> Everything is clear. Well, clearly said. <laughs> I'm so, sorry about that. There is a question whether we will share the PPT with the trainees. Uh, we will be doing that. Uh, we will share the PPT with you. You can make uh, so there. This uh, two PPTs that uh, Dr. Meenakshi Bharat shared one and we shared one. So. we were doing uh, under winds uh, when we were going to schools and colleges we were doing the first presentation that uh, dr meenakshi was sharing with you you can use that to uh, 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 when you do projects with uh, school girls and uh, in under winds program we did it in the last year and the other uh, presentation that you saw that will also be shared with you that you can go, uh, use it when you are doing training sessions in whichever place like the apartment complexes offices wherever that you feel there are uh, there, there is a need for the awareness programs any uh, anybody else who would like to ask a question question <laughs> okay i wanted to ask uh, uh, hello can you yes me? yes yes uh, yeah uh, nisha and uh, team uh, i also would request you all to make a small uh, uh, sort of a brochure or a flyer about the training session uh, and you know like uh, going forward uh, how you can help the other uh, clubs all over the i mean uh, world uh, so people who i mean like i am in touch with a lot of sustainable development groups so i can always uh, Uh, you know, like share them. This is happening, and we can take uh, you know, like small sessions only for those clubs going forward. If that is there, that is done, then that will be helpful. Yes, sure, Gitanjali, we will work on that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that suggestion. Thank you. Uh, dear friends, a lot of us are writing to us. Our email ID is mhmteam three one nine zero at gmail dot com. you can write to us directly mhm team 3190 at the rate gmail.com it becomes easier for us to converse with you to send you the ppts to send you the brochures whatever is required yeah i have put the email address in the chat box suparna yes thank you so much nisha angelina has a question how do you overcome fear of breaking hymen amongst the young girls or women to convince them to use the cup who would answer dr meenakshi over to you well the best way that we can actually show you is to show the describe the hymen and if you can see this i show this as the hymen and the hymen has a hole in it already because you bleed the hymen cannot be intact if the hymen is intact you wouldn't bleed at all and all 
women very few have a imperforate hymen so they all bleed and when we are you know uh, doing exercise or doing anything running cycling this expands and becomes a little looser so in kenya they have done um, you know given it to school girls and they have been very effective in understanding and using it and very comfortable and the white discharge comes out the stomach pain comes down everything comes down so it if you're looking at this this is how the cup goes through and then it closes so you have to find somebody who is adventurous in the group that you're talking to and inspire them to use it once they have used it then they will turn around and teach everybody so once they get cup worded and they become an expert on it they will then spread the word to everybody so peer pressure is extremely important to make this happen so that even unmarried girls but i basically say that they need to be 16 years at least before they can start using the cup because they need to know their body and they need to be responsible to insert it in and remove it so therefore 16 to 18 years is what i would consider good once it becomes popular then you can get to a younger child but the mother must be using it if the mother is not using it she won't allow her child to use it okay so i want first all the rotarians their wives to use lady rotarians and their wives to use it unless you use it you cannot you know explain the liberated feeling that you get when you are using the menstrual cup and from age 20 to age 50 is 30 wonderful years that you can use i didn't have the opportunity i'm just that just, just that much older but ladies don't lose this opportunity to use this wonderful device for your periods which will make your periods like not having a period and you don't have to be mm. wait for menopause to be pad free you can be pad free by using the menstrual cup so please take it up as as your project so no incinerators no pad distributing machines don't waste your money on it instead you know less than 10 pounds or uh, 12 dollars you will get this cup that is available many varieties there are And even if you pay 30 dollars in the us for it it is still better because when you buy um, tampons or pads minimum of 5 to 10 dollars per month is what you would spend so economical comfortable no trash and just the most wonderful thing in the world so cups can be used by everybody who is sexually active without any worries because this is what goes inside when you are having intercourse this is what goes inside when you're putting the cup this is what goes there this is how it is okay that seems <clears throat> a very plausible explanation uh one place where peer pressure has a positive effect and that's what is required ah lovely grandchild of <laughs> <laughs> yes Vienna. that's my grandchild and he has never used any this diaper he's always used a cloth napkin okay uh okay. suparna so, i think we have miss angeline who wants to say something i saw her raising a hand miss angeline yes. you want to ask something yes i, I thank you very much uh, dr minakshi um i was just thinking that in some cultures you know because they they're so obsessed with uh, the the hymen and and in terms of breakage and all and, and marriage they have the proof that they have the hymen intact so um you know these are the societies that were very will be very difficult to to convince them to use the the cup i'm just wondering whether you have come across that problem or not and also um whether uh or whether i'm just thinking also about the legal aspect you know whether they will blame it on the cup or or have legal proceedings against you know the manufacturer of the cup or or the 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 person who have given them the use of the cup so do you, have you come across such situations 
it's a very common problem in india which is why we tell them that wait till you get married then there is no problem at all and in india a lot of percentage of girls are already married by the time they are 18 so we we tell them that otherwise the mothers in law and the mothers will come and you know catch hold of us and strangle us so therefore you you have to be sensitive to the local customs that are being followed by the society so which is why we say cloth pads from menarche to marriage and marriage to menopause is the menstrual cup again the cloth pad has to be used post delivery because the vagina becomes loose immediately after delivery and it takes about 6 months to get back its uh, elasticity therefore we would have to use cloth pads even after delivery so is 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 better than than to to market it to uh i suppose to people who are really probably working or who are presumably when they are working they are already married in that sense rather than to 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 try to uh, get this uh, to i suppose uh, secondary school students or, or university students no make them aware that there is an option that they can take it up immediately once they pass 18 or 20 years mm-hmm. because otherwise if they are not aware that there is a better option than cloth pads so tampons disposable sanitary napkin, napkins better than that is the cloth pad and better than the cloth pad is the menstrual cup yeah i was just thinking of you know when you are aiming at the rural areas and 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 um, i suppose the poorer areas you know then it's, it's a matter of how to approach it then so during during the covid times when we were giving food to the people we were also giving cloth pads because there is a learning curve that is there for the usage of the cup when mm-hmm. you give a cloth pad there is no learning curve everybody knows how to use it and everybody knows how to wash it because they wash their own clothes so this also gets washed with the clothes and nothing special about washing it mm-hmm. yes in in australia we we have uh, ngo that you know makes the cloth uh, pads and and they send it overseas to to uh, poor areas and all to support the women there so i'm just thinking about you know um introducing this uh, to some of the ngos in australia the cloth pad they can use that cups. uh the, introduce the cups because i have not come across the cups in australia in a chef fact the cup you know, is the most among... fantastic thing that is there So, yeah i think so too i think it's a very good and innovative innovative product yes it's been there for many years but it's become popular in the last 10 years mm yes do look out i'm sure it will be available in australia too it's probably available in australia but i'm just thinking about the ngos i when it come across ngos trying to produce the the cloth pads you know yeah. and and none of them are marketing or or offering the menstrual cups correct yeah. so uh, well you can take that message back and you can uh, uh, spread it we'll give you videos we'll give you presentations we'll give you everything that we have uh, made so that uh, it's easier for you to s- spread the message yeah that will that will be good too yes you know i'm just wondering now with the covid you know if if if, if i could get hold of a cup also to demonstrate Yeah I'm sure Nisha will yes. be able to give it to you or send it to you parcel it to you Thank so you send your training kit Miss Angeline Yes all right that be good thank you And well done to everyone you know and the presentations I think is very interesting um and I learned a lot from all of you thank you Thank you Thank you Any other questions from anybody? Uh, I don't see any more questions. So um, maybe we can request for anybody to uh, give their feedback of the uh, program today. If any, if anyone is interested, they can give their feedback. 
yeah kindly unmute yourselves and give a feedback we are seeing a lot of feedback on the chat box but it would be nice to hear from you uh, yeah. one more information for you uh, the session is live it's streaming on rotary district 3190 youtube page uh, the link will be shared with all of you so that you can uh, share it with your club members and interested ngos friends of rotary in your respective districts and countries so the link will be shared by our team with you uh, shortly actually we would love to hear from other clubs you know they have if they've been working on projects similar to this we would love to have exchange of ideas we still have about 4 5 minutes right suparna uh, yes yeah surekha has raised her hand she can please unmute herself and speak hi i am from uh, 3190 it was a wonderful program and uh, learned a lot uh, looking forward to implement this in uh, uh, the other districts as well thank you so much thank you surekha yeah Okay. Hi. Can I say something? Yes, please Thank go ahead, Doctor Emily. Yes, 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 please. Yeah, I'm Rotarian Doctor Emily from Nigeria, and um, ever since I heard about um, this program, the menstrual cup, the menstrual um, cloth, I'm highly interested because I see the benefits. However, I'm not sure I have seen this product in my country. and so i feel is actually a call to action because as a as an ob i think it's very important that i champion this course so i intend to take it as my club project um i'm from rotary club of aladimma oweri in district 9142 i'm just a young rotarian this is my third year in rotary and um I'm the secretary of my club and the club chair. I mean, uh, project chair. So I feel that there is something I can do to improve the lot of our young girls. However, I would need a lot of um, support and assistance in getting the products. And um, it's good that they. Um, this is a live stream and it's going to be on YouTube. So I hope I'm permitted to. Um, still from your pr presentation when i decide to um cascade the training downwards thank you very much i'm really glad to be here thank you so much thank you so much emily stealing uh dr what emily what is you should call it stealing yeah yeah dr emily uh just wait for a little time we may have some good news for you in the near future oh okay I Wait, and I will be glad to hear the good news. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, any more feedback from anybody? Um, hi, I'd like to say I'm Rose from the Rotary Club of Chitungwiza in Zimbabwe. No. And I am with District Nine. Two one zero in Africa, and I just want to say thank you for the wonderful presentation today, and probably greetings from everyone in District Nine Two One Zero. And I've already sent some emails off to you while we've been chatting away, just to say, please, we need to know how we can get hold of the training kit, and also maybe even samples of the uh, menstrual cup. because i think that is something we should be promoting especially to our women in the rural areas uh where there is no income and also because it is so efficient and effective and the fact that you can just pay uh once off and it will last 10 years that means in your lifetime you probably only need two or three cups so i think it's such a fantastic uh, innovative product and we need to get our hands on it as quickly as possible and also to promote it globally thanks and thank you to the presenters the hosts and everyone you take care and all the best and please stay safe because covid-19 is with us and i just pray that we're safe
come through it without too much uh, of a problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thank you, Rotarian Rose. Uh, thanks again. I know, you know, like uh, just in today morning, I posted it and uh, it's so kind of you to have joined. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Rotarian Rose, for being with us and for those kind words. And I'm sure we will get in touch with you and we'll... Uh, definitely help you out with whatever information you would be requiring from our end. We are all there to help you out and to share the knowledge. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Sigan Mittal has raised a hand from Banishankri Club. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. It was a wonderful presentation. It was a very uh, interesting talk. You are inaudible. Ma'am, your voice is a little, uh, needs to be increased, the volume. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Now? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I said thank you first. It was a lovely presentation and uh, it was very interesting. Uh, I would like to see the practical part of it. If I can get to know what companies are there and uh, what are the different models where to get the pads and the cups. I think that will help. Nisha, I think you should answer this. Yes, so we will get in touch with you. Uh, if you can just drop us an email, we will provide you the training kit and we'll connect you to the vendors uh, to take your project forward, ma'am. Yeah, hello, so good much. afternoon. Can I come in for a minute? Hello, good evening, Nisha. Good evening, Dr. Shobha. Yeah, good evening. Can I take a minute? Please, please, please do. Okay. Good evening. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Shobha, President of Rotary Club of Platinum City. I wish to congratulate our MHM Chair, Rotary Nisha Bellare, and the District MHM team for the wonderful program. They are into it very passionately, and it was wonderful listening to all of them and all your expressions of you know, learning. It was really good. Please join hands with them. The entire team is there to support in this endeavor. Thank you so much. It was beautiful today, meeting all of you across the globe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shobha. Thank you, Dr. Thank Shobha. You. Uh, Shiv, do you see any, any more uh, raised hands? I don't see on my... Uh, no, I, I don't see any more. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, Dr. Nisha, can I? Yes. <laughs> okay, I am uh, not a thank doctor. You so much. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, Nisha, for inviting me. A very wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm looking forward to do this project for our Rotary Year next year. My president-elect was uh, ladies, so I think it's very easy for us to go into this project. But I, I need more findings on the exactly usually how many uh, women like the ladies in Bangladesh know about this cup system. We are trying to support the rural areas women uh, because I find these cups is very convenient. And also, um, I think we can work on this budget also. Like we are looking at what, what we can reach out you know, to help out these uh, rural ladies. You know, So uh, I definitely will join your next session and need more information. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Rutir and Shireen. We just, you can count on us for handholding you to set up the entire program in Bangladesh, all across Bangladesh. I think, Superna, I think we don't can... have any more questions. I think. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Uh, it was uh, interesting interacting with all of you. May I now call upon and a very uh, nice, productive afternoon, I feel, because it will have ripples across continents now. Uh, it, was, uh, it was very heartwarming to see your positive feedback. That's point number one. And point number two is we are there to reach out to you, as Nisha has already promised. Uh, thank you so much for being here. May I now call upon Chaya Talupuru to give the vote of thanks. Chaya, over to you. Thank you. Uh, 
um, happy greetings to one and all present here. I, Chaya Talpuru, Club Services Director from Rotary Platinum City, Bangalore, take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks for the day. I wish to express my sincere thanks to our own home club president, Dr. Shobha, for being present here. I also extend my thanks to all the dignitaries, esteemed guests from across the world and wonderful speakers of the day. Thank you all for joining us. I hope all of you will subscribe to the greener and sustainable menstruation practices. Thank you. Over to you, Suparna. Thank you. Thank you, Chaya, for those uh, heartwarming words. Uh, dear friends, we once again uh, thank one and all who have joined us this afternoon uh, uh, with uh, Nisha's um, uh, terrible energy. We are all here together to do this wonderful uh, workshop with, along with you, training the trainer. Dr. Minakshi Bharat and Lavanya Shankar have been graceful to uh, given their time to do this uh, training, the trainer session with all of you. But as a team, MHM3190 is with you. Please drop in a mail at our email ID, which has already been put here, mhmteam3190 at the red gmail.com. Uh, I repeat that once again. And thank you all for joining us this afternoon. This is Suparna Ghoshal from the MHM team. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for the wonderful, uh, my wonderful uh, being a wonderful audience, and really thanks for all your support. It's really great to see that everybody wants to do so many projects in different countries, and it, it feels so good uh, to have just been able to just present it to all of you today. And very thankful to the MHM team. Thank you, all of you, for attending. Uh, and you can be rest assured 3190 is with you all the way to help you implement the projects in your districts, in your countries. I think uh, nobody in this team has actually told you that they are all cup words. Yes. They are all using the cup and that is why they are so passionate about spreading the message. So first, please all Rotarians and Ans convert into using the cups and then you will be able to talk, you know, nonstop about it. Only then will you be able to talk nonstop about it. So charity begins at home. Right, so thank you so much. And if we don't have anybody asking questions, we can say bye and look forward to meeting all of you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Nisha Lavanya and Dr. Minakshi. Great presentation. Excellent emceeing by Suparna. Superb. <laughs> wonderful Very program. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, so we, we just hope all these people, uh, you know, uh, we should be there to handhold them to take it forward in their various countries. I think that that will be a fantastic uh, success to this training program. Yeah, yes. Yes. true. True that. True. I just wanted to say one thing. My backdrop is our, uh, I'll just move you. Hasiru. Hasiru. Yeah, she, that's what Soumya has designed, by the way. That the mascot has been designed by Soumya. Soumya, we want to see it. I thought I put in my backdrop. <laughs> Very nice. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs>